O oh, most delicious morsel, perceive my appreciation of your unique gifts. Your brow, exquisite in its simple symmetry, is shapely, hinting at the delicacies contained therein. It is merely the wrapping, fragile package concealing tangy treasure. Snuggled close, warm and most beneath pale bone, fatty coils of succulent gray meat quiver to be plucked, to be exposed for the appreciation of all, before inevitable ardent consumption. Ah, that hits the spot. Welcome back. In this week's Sunday lore video, we'll be talking about the telepathic consumers of brains, the Mind Flayers. And this topic in Forgotten Realms lore is very relevant to Baldur's Gate 3, as the reveal trailer for the game back in 2019 focused almost entirely on Mind Flayers, as we witness a Flaming Fist soldier in the city of Baldur's Gate morph into a Mind Flayer, and then the camera pans up to the sky and it looks like an alien invasion is taking place. But perhaps even more importantly, we start our BG3 adventure on a Nautiloid ship with a tadpole squirming around in our brain. Before we dive into it, though, a special thank you to all channel members and patrons who help keep series like this alive. And if you missed last week's video, be sure to go check it out as we have the creator of the Forgotten Realms himself tell us a bit about the city of Baldur's Gate. Let's begin. Mind Flayers, also known as Alithids, are the bane of intelligent beings throughout the vast realms. With their psychic powers, they exert control as despotic rulers, subjugators, and intrepid interdimensional voyagers. These cunning masterminds exploit and harvest entire civilizations to satisfy their perverse objectives. Emerging from their octopus-like heads are four serpentine appendages, coiling with voracious anticipation upon the approach of sentient beings. Since the fall of their empire, Mind Flayer collectives have been found to reside in the Underdark on the planet of Toril. Their oldest and most prominent city in the Underdark is known as Orindal, the city of lore takers. And Orindal is highly famed for its inhabitants' rampant collection of exclusive knowledge, and it's even said to rival that of Candlekeep. Orindal is also the birthplace of a subrace of dwarves known as Dwergar, also referred to as the Grey Dwarves. As long ago in the past, Mind Flayers enslaved a population of Shield Dwarves, and during this clan's captivity, which lasted for generations, the Mind Flayers of Orindal performed all sorts of unusual and cruel experiments on them. Over generations, these dwarves' skin would turn to shades of grey, and they would also develop some special psionic powers. The Dwergar at large now are free from Mind Flayer enslavement, and they have their own city in the Underdark known as Gracklestooge. Before we get into the history of the Illithid Empire and Mind Flayer society, let's briefly talk about a Mind Flayer's diet and also what all of this tadpole in our brain talk is about. Mind Flayers feed on the brains of sentient creatures. And these types of brains provide enzymes, hormones, and psychic energy that's necessary for their survival. As a Mind Flayer devours a sentient brain, it also absorbs that creature's memories and even their personality. Mind Flayers don't always eat the brains that they capture, though, as sometimes they may wish to turn a brain into a servant of theirs that takes the form of an intellect devourer. Essentially, these are walking brains. This is done through an excruciating operation, and actually, if you explore carefully in the early parts of the BG3 tutorial, you may even come across an interesting, gruesome scene relating to this. So what is a tadpole? Mind Flayers are actually hermaphrodites, and a few times in their lifetime, they'll spawn a clutch of eggs, numbering around 1,000 into brine pools, and these eggs will hatch tadpoles. The tadpoles that can survive around 10 years in their brine pool, the ones that avoid being eaten by other tadpoles, will be deemed worthy candidates for a process known as ceramorphosis. Ceramorphosis is the eerie transformation process wherein an elithid tadpole becomes an adult. The process starts when a Mind Flayer inserts a mature tadpole into the eye or ear of an adequate humanoid creature. As you can see this happening to Lazelle and our own player character in the intro cinematic to Baldur's Gate 3. The tadpole will then burrow itself into the victim's brain and begin consuming the brain's gray matter, while also replacing it with its own squalid tissue. After about a week of an excruciating transformation process, this humanoid creature will have fully morphed into an adult Mind Flayer. 
One of the interesting mysteries of the BG3 reveal trailer is that we witness the Flaming Fist Soldier turning into a Mind Flayer within a matter of seconds. Now, if a tadpole is inserted into the brain of non-humanoid creatures, an adult Mind Flayer will not form. Instead, you may find other, even more horrific creatures, such as a Brain Stealer Dragon, Vampiric Elithids, or Europheons, and we actually got to see what appears to be a Europheon in the stone effigy in the intro cinematic to the game. One Mind Flayer spawn that I wouldn't mind coming across, though, are these oh-so-cute gnome ceramorphs. Come on, Larian, make us stuffed animals. Now let's get into the history of the Illithid Empire and their society, as much of this information will be useful to know in Baldur's Gate 3. Some sages in the realms theorized that the Mind Flayers were aliens from an unimaginable distant future, and they had come back in time to prevent their extinction from being brought upon by the end of the universe. Others believe that they are inbred mutant offspring of humans from an ancient and distant crystal sphere. And there's also scholars out there who simply believe the Mind Flayers come from the Far Realm, which is a plane of madness situated very far from the planes of the standard cosmology. Regardless of the theory of where they originally come from, most of the origin myths agree that the Mind Flayers long ago were the most powerful race in the Inner Planes, commanding vast empires in the Astral Plane. Their time of power was limited though. Around minus 1100 DR, BG3 takes place in 1492 DR, the Gith race, which was the Illithid's most prominent slave race, launched a successful rebellion and actually took down the entirety of the Mind Flayer Empire in the Astral Plane. The Gith would continue to relentlessly hunt down all Mind Flayers that they could find, and they actually brought the entire Illithid race to the brink of extinction. The Gith ended up splitting into two sub-races, the Gith Yankee and the Gith Zerai. And the Gith Yankee to this day still dedicate their lives to hunting down Mind Flayers on the backs of their young red dragons. In fact, part of a Gith Yankee's rite of passage into adult Gith Yankee society requires that one bring a decapitated Mind Flayer head to the Gith Yankee Lich Queen, Lacketh. When the empires fell, the Mind Flayers scattered and some found refuge in the Underdark on the planet of Toril. There's no doubt though that they would seek to become the ultimate power in the realms once again, and they do possess a growing deadly force on many worlds. Moving on to Illithid society. Mind Flayers typically exist within a structured, ordered society where every Mind Flayer has its place and purpose. Every Mind Flayer is not really its own self though, as in the center of Illithid communities resides an Elder Brain living in a brine-filled pool. Elder Brains form the physical and spiritual center of a Mind Flayer community, and they not only serve as a library of a community's history, technology, and knowledge, but they're also, and perhaps more importantly, the community's effective leader, as they direct and advise their Mind Flayers in all sorts of political and military decisions. An Elder Brain is comprised of the brains of dead Mind Flayers that sacrifice themselves to strengthen the Elder Brain's power and intellect. This was an ultimate goal of a Mind Flayer's life, to become part of the Elder Brain. Elder Brains can communicate telepathically with their community, and also other creatures within a radius of around 5 miles. Although rare, there are renegade Mind Flayers that have freed themselves from an Elder Brain's arrogant supremacy, but most Mind Flayers are joined with one, and they're actually unaware that their personality and consciousness were lost in this process and that only their knowledge and ideas have survived. It's important that we also briefly discuss Ilsensine, who is the patron deity and creator of the Illithids. The tentacled lord embodies their ideals of mental prowess, unlimited knowledge, and willful dominion over all other life forms. Ilsensine is often thought of as omnipresent mental energy, but avatars of Ilsensine have made themselves known in the realms. Immediately following the Dwergar uprising in Arindal, which took place in approximately minus 4000 DR, an avatar of Ilsensine appeared and saved the city from total collapse. During the time of troubles in 1358 DR, when gods walked as mortals, Ilsensine manifested in the city of Arindal again, adopting as its avatar the city's elder brain. Ilsensine's thoughts were a relentless tide of dark deceptions and unimaginable deviancy, and according to elven myths, Ilsensine created the Mind Flayers as a counter-creation to mortals that came into existence from other gods. 
Now there's a lot more that I could talk about with the Mind Flayers, and perhaps I'll do an even deeper dive in the future before Baldur's Gate 3 comes out, but I'm gonna leave it at that for this particular video. This upcoming Sunday video, I actually might not be able to get out, so we might be taking a week break, I'm not entirely sure yet. I do have a meniscus tear surgery on Thursday of this week. Nothing major, I'll be okay, but a surgery nonetheless, which does kind of take you out of the game for, you know, a couple days or whatever. I got to figure out how I'm going to sit at my desk and all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.